Commonalities in the Views on the Other by Gabriel Marcel and Emmanuel Levinas. Through the presented philosophical perspectives, we can discern efforts to emphasize the value of human beings in relation to the other. Although each philosopher follows a distinct path, both uphold personalism, recognition, and love for the other. So, are there any similarities between Gabriel Marcel and Emmanuel Levinas in their philosophical views on the other? A sincere dialogue with the other and the divine. One can say that humans have an existing relationship with the other and society because objective consciousness precedes self-consciousness. Humans often look outward before turning their gaze inward. In specific experiences, a person only sees their face in a mirror or reflection. No one directly sees their own face. When facing the other, both philosophers see an invitation. This invitation, like a magnet, draws individuals into a relationship through dialogue. With this, Gabriel claims, I wait for the response of the other because I consider that response as a light for my life. The other also reflects, knowing that I respect that response. For Emmanuel Levinas, the face speaks to them and invites them into a non-violent relationship. This encounter will shake them, awaken their humanity, and compel them to take responsibility. That face is also the other according to Levinas. Clearly, the philosophy of dialogue or intersubjectivity from Marcel responds to a similar invitation to that of Levinas. Moreover, like Levinas, Marcel asserts that we can encounter God through our relationship with the other. Marcel sees the other as a brother, considering the other as someone like oneself. Such encounters are seen as humane and humanitarian communications. True love, unconditional love, is the force that makes humans commit, demanding that they forget themselves to welcome and respond to the invitation of the other. This is evidenced by God because this led Marcel to Catholicism's doctrine, God is love, and all commandments revolve around two fundamental laws, love God and love others. With Levinas, he relies on Descartes' idea of an infinite God. That infinite kindness is expressed abundantly in love and human dignity. Furthermore, Levinas also believes that intersubjective relations between humans must be based on encounters with the other. However, these encounters must then take place with others, as a condition for making laws and establishing justice. When facing the other, we owe everything to them, but we owe someone else as well. At that moment, we will ask ourselves, who is close to us? Only when prioritizing relationships with the other and then with others can justice be established. From these points, somehow we can understand that although Marcel and Levinas do not share the same religious views, both believe in God and place him above all else. It is precisely the reverence for God that made the two philosophers open up relationships with the other as God has and continues to open up to his people. Challenging perceptions of the other in atheistic existentialism. Jean-Paul Sartre believed that hell is other people. For him, communication with the other is merely contiguity, lacking encounter or empathy. Moreover, every individual is a unique world, and there can be no empathy between him, no mutual subjectivity between the self and the other. The clear-cut approach of this existentialist thought is depicted through Sartre's gaze, a dominating gaze that transforms the other into possessions and eliminates the doors of the soul. In contrast to Nietzsche's perspective, who believed in the impossibility of genuine love, Existential humanism perceives the other as a factor that enriches oneself, making one truly human. If Sartre's gaze implies domination, Marcel and Levina's gaze conveys supplication. According to Marcel, my pleading eyes, my begging attitude, make the other experience the most poignant moments. These eyes express humility before the other but without implying weakness. They are eyes that speak and lead to a relationship. Levina's shares a similar view. Not every gaze aims to strip others bare, rob them of freedom, and subjectivity. The eyes, the gaze, remains an image of something loving, containing. Moreover, with a face full of nobility and mysticism as Levinas describes, even Sartre's gaze cannot strip away the freedom and subjectivity of the other. Regarding Nietzsche's viewpoint, according to Gabriel Marcel, love is a higher stage than affection with the condition being supplication. For him, the experience itself leads to empathy with the other, treating the other not as a natural essence but with compassion, genuine freedom. At the same time, love is not a concept, 
but to love is to love someone, a person, a fallen one. Hence, if we believe that genuine love is impossible, as Nietzsche advocates, we probably cannot live peacefully and happily with each other. Because when we do not live with love, we lose the happiness that the other brings to us. Unlike Nietzsche, Emmanuel Levinas argues that the most important thing is the new relationship because one cannot separate oneself from others. For him, living in relation to the other is the key reference point to build a view of humans and a new humanism. A humanism that does not place reason, freedom, or selfhood at the center but is a humanism of the other. Thus, to achieve happiness between oneself and the other, one must look at the other through the lens of love. Only love can help us accept the other as easily as the Bible says, love forgives all, believes all, endures all.